name is Ken Roberge. I am one of the master gardeners here in Rutherford County. And as you probably know better than I do, the master gardeners hold a course at each of the farmer's markets on various topics. Not only master gardeners, there's some other people, but there's a list of topics. I think they're available on the table out there. But today's topic is around apps for your smartphone or your, or your smart pad. Now, apps are a whole new area. And as you probably know, there's an app for everything. So we're going to talk about apps for, their, for gardening today. Okay. okay. I'm particularly going to be talking about, I'm going to be using an iPhone 6, a mini pad, and what's called Apple TV. The same should apply to your Android devices and to the Android App Store. So we'll talk about Apple because that's what I use. And we'll talk about the iTunes Store for applications for finding apps. But what I'm covering here should be applicable to your Samsungs, your other devices. When we go into the iTunes App Store, there are thousands of apps. I just Googled or get, did a search for the word gardening. And this is some of the apps that showed up. This is maybe a third of them. I didn't think you wanted to look at three pages of this. But there are apps and apps and apps. Some good, a few very good, many quite bad. A way to look at an app, when you look at an app, is look at the reviews for the app. See how many people like it, what they say about it, how many stars it's rated. That gives you a good, good feel for whether the app is useful or not. But this is just an example of all the apps. And obviously I cannot even begin to go through them all. First, because I couldn't afford to buy them all. And second, because they're just too many. So I'm going to narrow it down to some that I use and show you how those work. But I'm trying to give you a cross-section of the different types of apps so you have a feel for what's out there. So I'm going to break apps for the purpose of this presentation into two types. Apps for identification and apps that help you with some action. So identification apps really just help you identify something. Or the action apps give you something to do, help you solve a problem by saying, do this, do that, or we recommend this, or we recommend that. So identification we'll start with. And a group of apps that I like, I find very useful, are the Audubon Society apps. And there's probably 30 or 40 of those. You know the Audubon books, these heavy books that you used to carry around with you when you go out on a field trip for trees or mammals or whatever? Well, they're not now fit now on your smartphone. The nice thing I like about these is that once you learn one of them, the same methodology works in all of them. So you get used to how to search for them. The thing I don't like about the other one apps is they're kind of expensive. They can be from five to ten dollars an app, depending upon the size. A few of them are down in the three dollar, but most of them are four ninety nine to nine ninety nine. So I'm going to take a couple of these and show you how they work. And you, oh, let me go back here just a second. You see we have apps on birds, this Audubon Bird Pro, $9.99, one just on owls, it's a little bit cheaper, uh, wildflowers, $4.99, mushrooms, $4.99, butterflies, I think that's $4.99, mammals, uh, reptiles, insects, so as a gardener, some of those might be 
very interesting and useful. Wildflowers, for example. Insects, for example, butterflies. If we're trying to grow gardens to attract butterflies. Or mushrooms. But all these kind of work in the same way. So here's three of their apps, the first page of three of their apps. This is the mushroom one. You see each of these have kind of an explore, add, my sighting, and the natural uh, nature city community. All of them start with explore. This gives you a method to explore mushrooms, or explore wildflowers, or explore insects. Add a sighting works on all of them. It's kind of you found a particular mushroom type or wildflower, you want to add that to your, your special list. So you can get back to it without searching for everything. Again, my sightings would bring up all of your ones that you have added. So let's dig a little bit deeper in these. If we go to explore, almost all of them Start like this. They give you an alphabetical listing of some type. Explore by name. And you can explore by the first name, the last name, or the scientific name. For example, black walnut tree. If you did it by first name, you'd find it listed under black. If you did it by last name, you'd look under walnut and you'd find it listed under walnut. And if you did it by scientific name, well, I don't know the scientific name for a black walnut tree. <laughs> You can kind of put filters in your search. Search by a particular size, a region, a color. There's a number of different types of filters you can put in when you're searching for something in, in the Autobahn apps. And all of these, no matter how you search and find something, you'll end up with a page that gives a description. And it's as a little plus sign down here indicates, it's probably several screens long. Now in a couple minutes we're going to go through and I'll show you some of these live. I just want to give you a heads up first of how we're going to be working. So you can search by name, by shape, by color, by size, by family. When we talk about butterflies, there's the swallowtail family, there's the sulfur family. So you start searching by families. Here's an idea of mushrooms, how you can search by shape, or maybe by color, or by region. Again, the nice thing I like about the Audubon series is that all of this, once you learn one of them, you've learned them all. There's other apps. Maybe we should stop now and go look at those Audubon apps. So here's my group of apps. I just have them in a folder I call Outdoor. I have another folder called Master Garden. We'll get to that in a minute. But Outdoor, let's look at the one for insects. Can you see the same screen we showed before? We'll look at here and search, uh, explore the insects. You want to explore them by name, by shape, by order, or some advanced searches. Let's go by name. Now we'll start seeing first name. You see lots of, you know, we can just scroll through a long list. Okay. I think my thing is a beetle, but I'm not sure of the first name, so I might really want to search by last name. So this is just rearranged up to look for ants now, aphids. All the different types of bees, mining bees, mason bees, uh, honey bees, bumblebees. So if we want to look at the let's say, tricolor bumblebee. It'll have pictures of it. If you see the dots here, this indicates only one picture. 
You could see five dots here and indicate there's up to five pictures. Okay, I want to continue on. Oops, I want to go back here. I want to go up to the top now to description. So here's a description. Well, somehow I got the red tail bump. Yeah, the red tail bump will be here. So a description of it here. Usually the size, something about the habitat, the range it's in. This one says, I didn't know this one. Unlike a bumblebee, a, a, unlike a honeybee, a bumblebee can sting many times. I didn't know that. <laughs> and something about the life cycle. This one is only one page. Yeah, down here. If I wanted to take a picture of myself, the bumblebee I saw and added to my sightings, I'd take a picture here, I'd locate where I was at, and label it. So this kind of is an example of the Audubon list. I can go back, here's the whole list again. But I'm going to look at just one of the other autobots. Let's say here is one on trees. Works exactly the same way. Explore by name, let's explore by shape. Okay, we kind of have these broad shapes of trees. Is it a conical, pyramid tree, a vase-shaped spreading tree? Well, let's use a spreading tree. These are spreading trees. American smoke tree, one I'm interested in, but I have never. This is the leaves, pictures of leaves. You can see there's several pictures in here, but shown by the dots. Usually the trees have the leaves, the flower, and the bark. So this has the leaves. Here it shows the range. Where is the smoke tree range? Eh, it doesn't show very much, but there's some sightings down here. It's kind of a, a southern, central, south state uh, tree. I can look at a description of it here. It gives alternate names, a description of the tree. Height usually grows to about 30 feet. One foot diameter trunk is kind of a full grown tree. Why is that kind of information important? If you're planting one in your yard, you want to know in 10 years, what's it going to look like? How much room is it going to take? So these are the Audubon apps. There are other apps to, that give you the same type of information. I'm not a salesman for Audubon, but I like them because they're consistent. It's pretty neat that I can go back between the computer and the screen, I think. Okay, but there's some other apps. Here's one that's kind of, we should be paying attention to, especially as master gardeners when we look at it. What are the invasive species that live in our area? What should we not be planting? Well, here's an app, Invasive Plants of the Southern Forest. And you can break it down by shrubs, trees, vines. Honeysuckle is an invasive plant. I love the smell of honeysuckle. But it's an invasive plant. We would encourage myself, and as Master Gardeners, we encourage people to plant non-invasive, such as a trumpet vine or something that is local and not something that is invasive. But here's a great app on the invasive plants. Again, you can search down and drill down into it. Two apps I'm going to show you here on just identifying weeds. You don't see a whole lot here, but this is a pretty good app for just looking at the weeds that you have around your house. 
And another one that's a little bit more towards a professional side is weeds and turf graft. Weeds in your lawn. Also a good app for looking at weeds because it'll ask you, is it a broadleaf or is it a, a grass like leaf? And it'll start narrowing down to help you find out what kind of weed it is. Ken, are those the Audubon apps? No, these are not. I, where'd you get those? Those Audubon apps? No, I mean, where'd you get that weed identification? Oh, they're also on the Apple App Store, the Apple Tune, iTunes Store for apps. All, all of these that I've shown you here are available on the Apple iTunes Store. They're available for iPhone and they're available for iPad. I can't swear to it, but I expect most of these are also available on the Android Store. But I've never been to the Android Store, so I don't know. Here is an, an app whose idea is great, but it doesn't work. This is an app called Leaf Snap, and the idea is you take a picture of a leaf and it goes through and compares your picture against a huge database of 28,000 photographs and comes back and tells you what it is. The idea is great. It doesn't work at all. I keep following this app hoping they'll get it working better. Because I think that idea is fine. There's also a similar app for flowers. And maybe once you get the technology right, you'll find an app for weeds along the same way. So this is kind of a concept of a good app, but not yet there. It does have a nice game, though. It'll start showing you pictures of leaves and see if you can identify them. Or it'll show you the fruits or nuts from trees and ask you to identify them. So this is an app that I'd recommend we kind of keep an eye on for the future. Because I think it will come, just not there yet. So these are the various types of apps that I include under identification. Let's go look at that one. I'm going to go look at that one called Lee Snap. So you can browse just like the other ones, like many of the other ones, like the Audubon app. You can browse this by trees. You can search by first name, last name, scientific, scientific name again, just like you could in the Audubon app. You can go down and get pictures, fruits, plants, and flowers of this tree. It's 
person. Wow. And it is actually right. This is an American chestnut tree. I tried this six times at home yesterday. <laughs> so it gives you these, what it thinks it is, but it is actually an American chestnut tree. I'm going to try it. Oh, gee. How much does that app cost? I don't remember. Are you free or? Yes, some of them are free. A lot of them are free out there. And the new trend is you buy the app for free, but it usually has an in-store app uh, purchase of some type. It'll give you the basic 10 trees or 20 trees, but if you want more trees, you have to pay another $2 or $5. Let's try another one. Does the extension service put out apps? Yes, I'll show you one. I'll show you even one that comes for our own that Mitchell up front has been involved with. Mitchell Mo. I've got to try this again. Here's another one. And guess what this one is? Again, I tried this about half a dozen times yesterday at home on this leaf, too. And it got this one as well. All right. There must be a better connection here. Must be. I think it has to do maybe with the lighting and the, and the white balance. It could well be. I don't know. And then does it give you information about that specific tree? Well, it tells you that tree, ginkgo tree, but then I would go back and say, okay, I browse for ginkgo here. Okay. <clears throat> what is this app called? Leaf Snap. Okay. I think that's all one word. But the technology, I think, is really great because we can do this and we can go on and get with flowers and weeds. Pretty soon you'll see medical apps. I mean, and there's one now you can examine your own eye. <laughs> Is it a separate app for each category? Like, there's one for trees, one for right now. Flowers. These these visual ones. There's one. They're all different. Okay. Different manufacturers. Yeah. So here's a ginkgo. I've never seen the fruit of a ginkgo tree. Mine is a male. Really, you want to buy male ginkgo trees? Because <laughs> the female wants to make a mess in your yard. You eat those seeds. You eat those seeds? Okay. I've never seen the seed. Okay. Let me show you another app. Oh, I got the apps up here. This is the one on the basis of species. Let's look at well, let's look at vines. This is typical honeysuckle we see. It's a Japanese honeysuckle here. There's lots of pictures of it. You see these are even labeled with the month they were taken in, kind of give you an idea. So this is a, a pretty good app for the invasive species, as we said, as I said. The Weed ID app. Again, this follows a different type of technology. So you start you start filling in questions about it. what kind of plant is it? Plant type. It's a broadleaf. Next is, what's its habitat? Uh, it's a 
my front lawn. Uh, how do, what's the leaf arrangement? Are they many leaves on the stem, one leaf on the stem? Are they alternating? You know, one leaf here, the next leaf down along the stem? Or are they opposite each other on the stem? The stem? So you can select arrange opposite each other on a stem. So you can fill in as much information as you can on this will improve the success or the probability of this identifying the right weed. So what kind of lobes did it have? Was it not lobe leave? And after you put in as much information as you can, you go up here and press identify and let's see what it might, what it suggests. Well, it's thinking it could be one of these. If you can then take one of these and look a little closer and see, is that? Is that really what it looks like in your yard? application for identifying your weeds. But again, these are all identification apps that I've been talking about here. I want to start talking a little bit now. I'm going to go back to my presentation. To kind of action apps. We're just going to, there's action apps for residential and commercial. I'm not even going to talk about the commercial apps because one, they're over my head, and two, they're over my pressuring for apps. Mm -hmm. But for education, here's a simple one. I think it's cute. I'm not sure how useful, but it is cute. You design your own garden. It's really around raised bed gardens. So you go in and tell it, I have my garden that's four foot wide, eight foot long. It'll divide it then into one square foot sections. So this is following the principle of square foot gardening. Next, you, you grab a vegetable that you want, you go through the long list of vegetables, drag it into that section. And I'll show this to you in a minute. And then it lays out your garden and it shows you, okay, In this top and bottom left hand section, it suggests putting one tomato plant in. Next to it, put in two pepper plants. Next to that, there's nine uh, uh, lettuce plants. Again, nine more lettuce plants. Two more peppers. And I'm not sure what all the other plants are, but it's suggesting how many plants you put in a square foot and how you lay out the garden. That's kind of a neat tool. It will then, depending upon what vegetables you selected, come up with a week-to-week -week suggestion of what you need to do in your garden. This one is put out by Gardener Supply Company. So it's a commercial app. They're selling it for a reason. Get you to buy their, their equipment, their, their... But it's a useful app. Can you tab locations on that? Yes, I think you do. To, to come up with a recommended list of when to do things, it needs to know what region you're in. There's another set of apps put out by Purdue University that I think are just really fantastic. I like these. And they all kind of work the same, just kind of like those Audubon apps. There's one around trees, perennials, annuals, and tomatoes. And I'm sure we'll see more in the future. But they really help you identify what's wrong. Because you can look at the leaves, the roots, the branches or vines, and the fruit. What's the cost on these apps? These are really inexpensive, two to five dollars, I think.
All of them kind of work like this. They have a title page. They then have a page, like this one shows you trees. So we're talking about shade trees, deciduous or conifers. Or you can look by problems, disease, insects, or others. Well here, if you start looking through disease, here's showing a tree branch covered with bagworms. Okay, what's going on with my tree? It's got bagworms. Go a little bit further, it will then show you, well, this is bagworms, but it shows you, here's another insect, a terrible insect. The emerald ash borer. It will kill all the ash trees in Tennessee in the next 10 years. Maybe there will be a few left, but it will kill essentially all the ash trees in the southeast. Am I overstating that, Warren? It depends on, you know, it's going to depend on the genetics on the ash tree. You know, mm -hmm. the uh, chestnut tree is making a comeback. And, you know, it's going to depend on tree breeders. This, this disease was found in East Tennessee about four years ago. It's moving west. It's been found in Davidson County, in Coffee County. It has not yet been identified in Rutherford County, but it's just a matter of time. Oh, there's, there's some spots. <laughs> Emerald ash ore is going to do to the ash tree what, the, uh, what happened to the American animal. Okay. What's the biggest culprit? The biggest method for spreading this? Is transporting firewood. Firewood. You cannot legally move firewood from Knox County or around Knoxville out of the county. Now, is that enforceable? Not very well. If you go to campgrounds over in East Tennessee, they won't let you put your firewood on the on the on the ground there. You have to spread out a tarp and keep your firewood, if you brought it with you, there. Now what if you debark it? They're not getting into details in these campgrounds. It just says, don't bring, don't transport firewood is the kind of the message. Get your firewood locally. But you know, you can go down to uh, many of the grocery stores. You can go down to the uh, box stores and buy loads of firewood. Who knows where that wood came from? Okay, that's my little get off my soapbox on. Mm -hmm. But now, once you go here, you can look, you can see, this is the home page, describes the insect, the damage it does, the stages of damage, and what you can do about it. So this, this is just a tree app. One of my favorites here is this one on tomatoes. I think it's just fabulous. The tomato app. I just went, in this case, I went and looked at the fruit. Okay, okay. here's a tomato, and you see this stink bug on it. What it does to the tomato, what it does to the leaves here. Again, description, what it does, stages growth, what you can do about it. So these are apps, just except for Purdue, I think it's just fantastic. Here's one from the University of Tennessee. This is one that Mitchell Moat up front is involved with. And this is called IPM Light. IPM is Integrated Pest Management, and Light just means inexpensive version. There is an IPM Pro, it's $25. I didn't bother buying it. <laughs> the Light, I think, is $5. The difference is the pro will tell you what chemicals to use, the light won't. This one is more for professional use. I found I can't use it. It's not helpful to me as a amateur. Do they give you updates on these apps? Most all of these apps are updated. Once you buy it, it's updated automatically, at least in the Apple Store. So Probably quarterly, sometimes as much as once a year, an app gets updated. But usually once you buy the app, the updates are free and they're automatic. So this is another one that's kind of, I call, more professional related than 
amateur. But you can get off the subject of gardening itself. There's another realm of apps, all kinds of apps. There's one, there's not a whole lot, there are probably 10 or 15 around composting that give you some information around composting. This is not terribly scientific or terribly deep, but it gives you some information about the nitrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen uh, carbon. carbon level that you should be looking for in your compost pile. Here's one on organic gardening. This, the picture on the app is this lady up in the front top corner there. And I haven't done, I didn't buy it, so I could only do, show you the screens that were advertised here on, on the website or on the app store. So there's more apps that are kind of also related to gardening. Lots of apps around, uh, you know, food and cooking. There's all kinds of apps there. But I'd like to go back in now and look at a few of these uh, action apps. So I'm going to go to my master gardener folder here. And here are these apps, mainly from Purdue. Let's look at the tomato one. Okay. Search by tomato part. So the problem I'm trying to solve, is it related to the fruit, the leaves, the stems, the roots, the flowers? Kind of helps you zero in. Let's look at the leaves. Okay, now we're going to look through a whole bunch of pictures. Yeah, these leaves look pretty bad. But here's... Let's say, okay, I've got that in my tomato plant. What's causing that? Okay. Well, here it gives a description. Septoria leaf spot can cause defoliation. Can't get bad enough to the leaves drop off. Okay, again, now we go to that other screen. Small spots that grow together, spots are 16th or a quarter inch, very common in the Midwest. You can see there's other links you can go to get more information here. But I can also go down on the bottom and say, what kind of damage does this, does this problem cause? Okay. Kind of gives you some information. Older leaves are the first one to show symptoms. They have dark margins. Can be seen in this uh, fungal structure, can be seen in the middle of the 10x magnifying glass. The fungus are survives in crop debris. So if you're cutting leaves off, you don't want to leave them around your plant. You want to get them away. Here are the controls. I go over to the control here. This one is stating rotate your tomato crops every three or four years. That's always, there's a number of diseases that affect tomatoes. It is always good practice to rotate tomato family, tomato crops on an annual basis. For example, I have four raised beds. I move my tomatoes from one to the other each year and start again because diseases such as this remain in the soil of this bacteria. There's nematodes in the soil that will build up, that will affect tomatoes. But I'll give you one heads up. It's not just tomatoes themselves. He's not bothering me. And I'm almost finished, so you... Okay. <laughs> no, you're doing great. Well, he's a, a future farmer. <laughs> yeah. So, rotating tomatoes are is important, but it's not only tomatoes. It's the tomato family of uh, plants. So you have to know what else is in that family of tomatoes, such as potatoes. You wouldn't think that, but they're the same family. So you don't want to take your tomato plant out and put it potato plant in there because it's going to be subject to the same diseases. 
Okay, it gives you some insecticides here. Now we could go into the discussion organic, inorganic, but this is just, this act gives you potential insecticides. Basically, this app will produce, I think it's tremendous. It does a great job. You want to go look at fruits. Well, we've all seen various problems with our tomatoes. You can go through and find out what your tomato looks like and get more information around it. I'm going to go back and show you. Let's look at the tree doctor from Purdue. It follows the same type of approach. Shade tree. Let's go down and find 100 locust tree. Is my problems on branches, leaves, roots. Where are where where is my problem? Okay, you can start looking for types of problems here. That's interesting looking. What is that? Scale. Yep. Calico scale. A real useful app. A real useful technology. I just hope they continue with uh, more versions of this app. You want to get more scientific? Here's one on soil. go in, get your location right here. And what's downloading is this location right here, because it's using my GPS in, in the phone. And it's probably not getting a good signal. But it can give you, and Warren, you can, I won't even begin <laughs> to describe it to describe this when we have a professor who teaches this from MTSU here. But this is probably over my head and probably over the head of the average gardener. But it's detailed information on the dirt in your yard. It's probably changed from that because the house is built there. Yeah, and the soil has been so taken out and sold. Then you have to go buy some more soil to get it back in. Best just uh, ignore it. <laughs> but it's an app that's probably, as I said, I looked at it to try to learn about it, but uh, I found it's over my head for use. So that kind of is what I wanted to cover today, just to give you an introduction to the types of apps that are useful in gardening, give you some examples of those apps and encourage you to go find your own apps out there. Find the ones you like. Well, I guess I'm doomed because I still have my old flip phone. <laughs> my children laugh at me. You know, because I have right now. I don't think you can get a lot of these, though. If you have a tablet or your computer at home, you can download apps to those. Oh, yeah. Some, some of the younger generation, they're very helpful with you on your phone. My daughter is not helpful, but I have another who is, so it depends on who you have in your household to help. My granddaughter's pretty good. <laughs> She's been a lot of technically challenged. Well, I already bought all the Audemars books, so I'll buy, you know, buy yeah. something else. That's good. What? Okay, I just took a piece of my ribbon and just again, this is about a third of those under the title of gardening that's in the iTunes app store. Is your iPhone waterproof and dustproof? <laughs> the case I have around it at least is water resistant and dust resistant. Oh, okay. There's still holes in it though, but it's yeah. in the toilet or something. <laughs> you know, well, you know, you're watering and you get a you know, you get your, you know, leg wet or something, you know. And there's, there's little yellow boxes that you can take on your canoe trip. 
or your wet water rafting to protect your phone. But some of these are kind of cutesy. I mean, panda bear. Uh, and some will look more professional. So go out and explore, find the apps. You can get some idea. I recommend looking at the, the ratings for an app, read the comments from other people. It can save you money, you know, it says it's bad. Don't bother. So, I have a handout here, just a list, list of the apps that I, talk, that I talked about today. And by far, it's just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. So I thank you very much for attending, and if you have any questions, I can try to answer. Um, so some people have an app where they can control prices from one store to another store. I don't have anything like that. But would there be an app where you could say, oh, I want to buy a maple tree. Is it cheaper for me to buy it here or cheaper to buy it there? Well, I know What's one that? app that you can scan barcodes and it will mm -hmm. give you the price in the, in the region. But I don't know of anything specific around plants. For certain plant flowers. Or... Uh, again, if you had attended or if you ever attend the Garden Basic course or the Master Garden courses, we supply tips on how to look at plants when you go to a, to a store. I mean, don't hesitate to pull out a plant and look at the roots. Uh, they may not like that, but if they don't, then it's not the right place to be shopping. So I don't, to answer your question, I don't know a specific app that would help there. When you said barcode, that, that, that kind of told me that, no, you don't see a barcode on a, on a little thing of plants. So, yeah. Anything else? Well, again, then, thank you.